If you're wondering which of the many Gradle plugins you should be applying to your project, then stick around because we're gonna run through the 10 most important Gradle plugins starting right now. The base plugin is like the Daddy plugin. It's used by other plugins such as Java, which we're gonna talk about next. It registers several Gradle tasks, build, assemble, check, clean, but it's not a plugin you'll ever apply on its own Instead, it's applied automatically by other plugins. Fun fact though, the base plugin automatically adds clean tasks for tasks that produce outputs. For example, clean test, clean jar, which cleans up those Java related tasks, which we're gonna talk about next. The Java plugin, everything you need to build a Java project in one plugin. It sets up a whole load of configuration like standard project layout, source main Java for production code, and dependency configurations like implementation, runtime only. And it also registers tasks like compile Java for compiling your code, jar for producing a jar file artifact, and tests, well, for running tests. All of these tasks can be configured to your requirements like setting up special compiler options. Fun fact, did you know that you can set the Java toolchain up to enforce a specific Java version for compilation and runtime? And this will automatically download Java from the internet. Oh, getting tired with all that standing up. Oh, sorry. The application plugin is all about making it easy to run your Java application. You just have to configure a main class with a public static void main method, and then you can use the run task to start up your application. Yep, it's pretty straightforward. Fun fact though, the application plugin automatically applies the Java plugin, so you only need to apply one plugin. The WAR plugin is all about creating a web application resource file instead of a jar file. So when we apply the WAR plugin, it takes out the default Java jar task and replaces it with WAR. It also gives you a source main web app directory where you can put things like JSP files. And just like the application plugin, the WAR plugin extends the Java plugin so you don't have to apply both. Oh, fun fact by the way, if you're using the Spring Boot plugin, when you apply the WAR plugin, Spring Boot will automatically generate an executable WAR file. The Java library plugin is all about when you want to build libraries rather than applications. The main thing that it does is expose another dependency configuration called API. When do you use API? Will you use it for any dependencies that appear on the ABI, the application binary interface of your library? That could be public methods, for example. Fun fact, by the way, if you use the Java library API dependency configuration properly, any consumers of your library will love you because they'll have a clean compile class path. And now for a plugin released recently in Gradle 7.3, the JVM Test Suite plugin. This is applied automatically with the Java plugin and it allows you to create different suites of tests on top of unit tests. For example, you could set up an integration test suite, which has its own source directory and separate integration test task. This is really handy if you've got slow integration tests that you don't necessarily want to run as frequently as unit tests. Fun fact, the JVM test suite plugin can automatically pull in dependencies for JUnit 4 and 5 without having to declare them yourself. Nice. Oh, by the way, if you're a member of my Gradle Hero course, you'll find full details about all these plugins on the inside, including newly released lessons on Jococo, CheckStyle and PMD, which we're gonna talk about next. Jococo is a tool which measures code coverage, the percentage of your production code which is covered by tests. When you apply the Jococo plugin, another core Gradle plugin, it generates code coverage data. You can also run the Jococo test report task to generate an HTML report, and you can even configure it for XML reports useful for exporting to tools like SonarCube. Fun fact, you can also set up the Jococo test coverage verification task to automatically fail your build if your code coverage goes below a predefined threshold. CheckStyle is a static code analysis tool primarily concerned with the style of your code. The CheckStyle Gradle plugin wraps this all up so that when you run the check task, it validates your production and test code based on a CheckStyle XML file. Fun fact, you can use Google's CheckStyle XML configuration file in your own project. 
PMD is another static code analysis tool more concerned with code quality than style. With Gradle's PMD plugin, you can use pre-configured rule sets or define your own rule set XML file. And just like check style, when you run the check task, it will validate your production and test code. Fun fact, I never wrote a line of code that broke a PMD check. Well, at least not deliberately. And last but not least is the Maven Publish plugin, useful for publishing in Maven format to a Maven repository. At a high level, you specify what to publish and where to publish to. When you run the publish task exposed by the plugin, it will publish your artifact to a remote Maven repository. But please, please, please don't put your credentials in the build script. Fun fact, you can run the publish to Maven local task to publish to your local Maven repository and try out your changes locally. Even though each of these 10 awesome Gradle plugins holds a special place in my heart, I think it's fair to say that the Java and Java library plugins are two of the most important. So check out the awesome Gradle Multi-Project Masterclass. It's a free course where you'll learn how to use these plugins in multi-project builds. Just click the link right here.